はじめまして私は資料術師グスタフ生き死者たちよ我が呼びかけに応えるとはの眠りにつくのです魔力が体の奥からどんどんと湧き出してきます人の声をさようならあなたと一緒に戦っているとボーゼル様にお仕えしていた素晴らしい日々を思い出します。Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to talk about the way to build Gustav because there hasn't been very many videos about this banner's characters. So, Gustav is a very interesting character. Let's talk about her talent first, then the skills you would bring, her soldiers, and then finally go into her equipment. So, talent, Demon Ring of Time. The first effect is fairly common. After using a skill, you get int and magic defense increase of 10%. This buff can be stacked twice and it cannot be dispelled. So, you cast a skill, get the buff, cast another skill, get a second buff. Second effect is that after being attacked by an enemy and taking damage, the attacker has a 100% chance of obtaining increased cooldown of one random skill by one. And then at the end of the action, this can be stacked. Lasts for one turn.、Right. Allies within two blocks also have a 100% chance to reduce the cooldown timer of this skill by one after using a damage skill and after entering battle. So, two different effects.、Right? The cooldown increase is an interesting one because she would have to take a hit to apply this effect.、Right. Kind of difficult in that sense. The second one, though, could be very useful, especially for PvE content. As long as allies would attack within two blocks of her, They get a skill cooldown effect of one. This is especially great for characters like Lucretia, who needs to use single target strike skills a lot. If the skills are, get their cooldown reduced, they can be used more frequently. So, very good PvE skill.、Right. Now, let's talk about her skills. Her 3C is pretty much a must bring because of the passive effect. It increases unit range by two when your skills are cooling down. In other words, as long as you have one skill on cooldown, her range is increased by two, so she'll have four range.、Right? So, this is great because she has this one cost skill reset and has one turn cooldown. So, once you use it, the following turn, you have four range,、right? plus two range. And then, if you use a skill like her 3C, Which actually has five range, as a side note. Three range plus two gives five. So if you use this illusion of to time at that point, it has a cooldown of five. So you're going to have the extra range for quite some time after that. So that is one of the really nice things about Gustav bringing her 3C. So, in other words, when you play,、uh, if you're going to be playing. PVE content, you probably want this kind of skill build that she currently has. Disillusion of time for the cooldown and range increase. Then you bring two single target strike skills like time attack with lightning strike, or even freeze strike with lightning strike, so you can endlessly rotate between these, as the case may be. By bringing Disillusion of time, a single target, and a single target, you can endlessly launch out these single targets after you use the AoE, and you'll have four range for them. Then for PvP, that's, this skill combo is still possible. You can also bring the reset. And finally, there is also the choice of bringing two AoEs and reset. So you're going to bring the Disillusion of Time, the Black Hole, and then reset. So you would use what would be a common situation is turn one, use reset, increase the range to five, launch out a five range AoE. The following turn, this is on cooldown, launch out a second 5 range AoE, and then you go back to reset, and then after that, all your skills are kind of on cooldown.、Okay. But that would be the basic idea two AoEs in a row, and so on. So, next, let's talk about her soldiers. So, she has the pretty standard sorceress soldier, which is really her best single target soldier. She does have access to siege ballistas, which is interesting because they do increase the normal attack range by one. 
So that could be interesting as a choice. You know, like for example, if you don't bring attack skills like this, but she has the AoE, then it's plus two range, increasing it to four. And then without a skill attack, you could have five range with these Siege Ballistas. Just as a side note. And she does have access to survival soldiers. Like for example, you can bring Skeleton Knights that have a lot of defense. You can bring Crystal Warlocks that are stupidly tanky, of course. We've seen they're pretty difficult to kill. And of course, she has Dark Centurion for soldiers. So these three soldiers are also viable for a tanky Gustav surviving attacks. So, with her soldiers talked about, her skills and her talent, let's move on to talk about the next thing, which is gear for her. All right. So she has pretty much the three standard sets of gear that mages would use in general. The first set would be the single target set, which is kind of like Lucretia. Okay. You would bring a Scepter of Divinity for extra range. So rather than just four range, you go to up to five range with the Scepter, because right? it increases your range by one when you use single target strike skills. Okay. You would bring the nebulous robe because if you're worried about things like thorns, the reduced reflection damage will keep you alive. Tenyo's headdress to buff up allies, and Twilight Star ideally to break things like last rites and to break things like sorceresses. So that would be the pretty much a standard single target set with Breeze, of course, for the chance of extra mobility. The second set is the AoE set, which is something like what I have on Kruger. So this is a very standard set with Miracle Staff, Tenyo's Robe, Tenyo's Headdress, and Vidar's Rose. Because Vidar's Rose can dispel a buff on enemies, Miracle Staff has a chance to apply a debuff on an enemy and increases AoE damage. I have Clocks on this set. Keep in mind, Clocks is a very interesting enchant for her. I actually would suggest Breeze or Magic as a side note rather than Clocks. And the reason for that is an interesting little uh, issue with her. So let me just bring up Gustav's skills again to talk about the issue with the Clocks Enchant as a side note. The Clocks Enchant issue is that, let's say on turn one you use Reset. So you're, you have one turn cooldown. You can now launch an AoE. So you're going to launch an AoE at 5 range. This Illusion of Time has a 5 turn cooldown. If it clocks triggers, it has no cooldown. Black Hole, similarly, has a 5 turn cooldown. If it triggers, once again, she has no cooldown. So then her range goes from 5 range to 3 range. So a, a first clock trigger could prevent you from having follow-up AoEs having that 5 range, which could be an issue. It's not guaranteed to be. It could be by that time you're closed into the enemy and you there will be no issue launching out for follow-up AoEs, but it is worth mentioning. So it's something you need to consider if you use the Clocks Enchant. So moving on about that. So yeah, Clocks Enchant, you know, it'll allow for more continual use of AoEs, but you have that little issue. And so clock, we talked about Clocks Enchant, we talked about Breeze Enchant. The third enchant is, of course, the Magic Enchant, right? Magic Enchant for maximum AoE damage. That way you get skill damage plus 10% with another AoE damage increase of 5%. So 5% extra increased damage. So moving on though. So the third, yes, that was the AoE set, the pretty much standard AoE set. The third set would be pretty much an anti-assassin set of gear. And it would be something like this. Red Moon for the extra hit points, 5%. Tenyo's Robe for the 10% hit points and chance to dispel enemy buff and inflict a random debuff. Instead of Odin's Battle Helm, you would have another Tenyo's Headdress for another 10% hit points and buffing up allies. The key, the final item would be the Star Earring because Star Earring is one of the few that gives hit points and int. So, and in addition, it gives an extra 30% defense. So the combination of all of this could increase your survivability having enough hit points and defense to tank an assassin strike. Of course, there are various little other adjustments you can make. For example, instead, uh, you know, maybe you will prefer to fit in a glory of the world instead of a Tenyo's uh, headdress. You know, maybe you'll want a dimensional jewel because dimensional jewel also has the hit point with int increase and a cooldown effect. There are little various like minor adjustments you can make, but generally these three sets are de facto sets.
So there aren't very many videos of Gustav in action, but this is one of the few. So player one has Gustav and it's turn one where his characters have moved up and Gustav is just about to act. So she will move up and use her heal spell on juggler just to have a skill on cooldown so that she gets two additional range. Player two just doesn't act again and triggers the faction buff. So now player one gets to move and Gustav starts off by moving up and launching out her first AoE, her 3C skill, at 5 range, affecting all the enemies and debuffing them. Liana casts her Ode to Creation and does some talent healing. Licorice, Demonic Advance, and will now launch out her AoE, Dark Dragon's Breath. So, terrain effects, debuffing, AoE damage. So we can see a whole bunch of debuffs on these characters. Some of them have Gustav's debuff, like Sissy White does. Liana doesn't, but all her skills are on cooldown because she acted. Uh, yeah, so they all pretty much have the Gustav debuff, increasing skill cooldown. And we see a trigger right there, just now. Christiane uses one of her skills. I believe that's the AoE damage reduction effect. Yes it is, it just triggered. And now Wetham charges in and attacks. Really, Wetham is very limited here because Rosen Seal is in effect. There's no debuffs that Wetham will really apply due to all those shield effects from Rosen Seal, preventing debuffs. So, and we can see that Wetham, look at that, one turn cooldown, one turn cooldown, eight turn cooldown. So learn long cooldowns on Wetham skills, in other words. Because of the Gustav debuff, once again, the one extra turn of cooldown effect. So Rosen Seal will cast Miracle, rebuilding stacks, also increasing damage output of these AoE attackers. And now Juggler will jump in with him of the Sacred Beast, doing some AoE damage as well. So you can see both both of the healers of player 2 are actually very low on hit points now. And now Licorice will Dark Despair, another AoE. So nobody dies yet, but the Sword of Alhazard is gone. And most of the characters are near death, especially those two healers. You can see Liana, once again, all skills on cooldown. Sissy White, all skills on cooldown. So neither of them can use any heal spells, not even single character heals. And thus, Gustav with another AoE will start crushing these healers. Now, of note, needs to be mentioned here, is how the AoE does not hit Wetham because she has no self-targeting AoE. Any other AoE attacker with self-targeting would hit all the enemies. Gustav doesn't. But despite not doing any damage to Wetham, he dies when he tries to attack Juggler. And with that, player 2 surrenders. I mean, lost two characters already. Clearly over. I would think that this Gustav does not have clocks. There's no way to cast the spells again, but the two launches did tons of damage. My personal suspicion is this is a magic Gustav. And that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found it useful. And on that note, Nitro out.